Welcome to the Mac Vitalik Podcast, where we respect fashion's past, analyze fashion's present, and get excited about fashion's future. I'm Liberty Impop, founder and creative principal of fashion media company Manic Vitalik. Several times per week, I'll bring you episodes about exciting things happening in fashion, discussion about current issues facing the industry, and the places and people that have made the fashion industry great. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram at the Medical Talent Podcast and at Medical Talent, both linked in our show notes. Now, let's get into today's episode. Welcome to Season 2 of the Medical Talent Podcast. We're very excited to have you back with us. I'm Liberty, your host. During the off-season of the podcast, I got married and went on a month-long honeymoon to Europe. And I've got a lot of content coming up for both Manic Metallic and a podcast relating to that trip and its tie-ins with fashion. In fact, I have an entire episode of the Manic Metallic podcast coming up that will act as sort of a debrief on my fashion experiences in Europe. That said, I'm excited to be back and working full-time on both Manic Metallic and podcast work. The way that I'm aiming to do this season will be to have an episode devoted to the future of fashion, one devoted to the present, and one devoted to the past on a weekly basis. I'll give you more specifics on that in another episode, because I'm excited to get into the three things exciting me about fashion. Well, let's get to it. So the first thing is going to be designer Noir K. Ninamiya. Now, my first encounter with K. Ninamiya's work was in an interview that I read of his in the Tokyo Weekender while having lunch at the Dover Street Market Cafe in New York earlier this year. Norke Ninamiya operates under Comme de Garçon, which K. Ninamiya joined in 2008, and he began designing Norke Ninamiya a few years later. Now, I was immediately taken with his work and his willingness to push boundaries in the style of Rank Kawakubo while putting his own spin on CDG influence. And I came across some of his work recently in person when I was at 10 Corso Como in Milan. And it was truly a surprise to see these very well-made and very avant-garde clothes selling for mind-blowingly reasonable prices. Around 300 euros for dresses. Around 200 euros for shirts. I almost died. I didn't buy anything, unfortunately. Because my husband and I had to survive in Europe for a whole month for our honeymoon and we needed to keep our money. Otherwise, I would have bought immediately. When we got back to the States, I binged, I should say, devoured Noir K. Ninamiya shows online over a two-day span and was floored. I got a vibe from the clothing of if Iris Van Herpen ever designed at Comme de Garçon, it would be K. Ninamiya. And I think that if you've ever seen his work, then you'd probably feel similarly. But if you have seen his work, let me know. If you haven't, then definitely go and take a look at it. It really is fantastic work. And anyone that says that fashion is dead might just need to pull their heads out of the mainstream and avert their eyes from Dior and Chanel. I'm convinced that K. Ninamiya's work is some of the best in the industry at present. So the second thing on the list is going to be Valentino's Fall 2022 Haute Couture show. The show, titled The Beginning, was the product of an imaginary conversation with founder Valentino Garabani and Pierpaolo Piccioli, the current creative director, And it was easily one of the most beautiful things that I've seen from the fashion industry in a very long time. The bright, rich colors gave us all the sunniness missing from today's world. And the feathers, organza, silk, lace, tulle added to the true beauty of the moment. Here's a quote from Pierpaolo that I saw on WWD. And I do think that it's indicative of the place that I believe that fashion has in crisis times such as the one that we're in right now. Here's the quote. Beauty is resilience, not escapism. And creativity is the only means to contrast dictatorial decisions. I, I just think that that was really well said and I wanted to put it out there for you all. Now there were 102 looks in the show which 
you know how I feel about that. I feel that anything over like 40 or 45, maybe 60 absolute max is a bit excessive, but it was a beautiful showing nonetheless. The show was located at the Spanish Seps in Rome, which is Valentino, the brand's home city. And it, it was an impeccable decision, honestly. It was beautiful. And Rome has special significance to me because I was just there for 10 days during the first portion of my honeymoon. So I know how visually arresting that the Spanish Seps are. And when I saw that the show was being held there and I saw the models come down the steps and I felt like it all really just came together quite wonderfully. And Labyrinth's vocals provided a musical backdrop to the already stunning location. And so I think that the Spanish steps combined with the music created a Roman dreamscape that I think that a lot of people are going to remember for years to come. And Pier Paolo at the end, when he brought his team out to share in the applause and recognition, was a generous move. And it was one that I think that more creative directors should consider because it's entirely impossible that with some of the intricate and detailed work that brands put out, that only one person created all of that. And I believe that the people behind the curtain should start getting recognition for the work that they do. So it was a really good thing that he did that. And something else to note before I move on to the last point is that the show's ethnic age and size diversity were almost unparalleled in today's industry. So again, good job on Valentino for that. And just on a beautiful, beautiful showing. I want to take a quick moment to tell you about Manic Metallic's recent product. Do you like fashion? Does it matter to you beyond just entertainment value? Well, Manic Metallic is a fashion media company that creates audio, written, and video content that supports our ethos that fashion is an art, discipline, and societal force for change. We recently published a fashion ebook titled Alternative Fashion Capitals, a survey of 20 cities of emerging thought leadership. In it, we detail 20 cities beyond just New York, Milan, London, and Paris that have thriving fashion scenes, and we dive deep into what they have to offer, including shopping districts, specific places to shop, brands, events, fashion organizations, fashion publications, and universities and colleges. These 20 cities have a lot to offer the world with regards to the fashion industry, and Manic Metallic is determined to share their stories. We'd love for you to consider purchasing this fashion ebook and for you to join our growing community via our website, social media, newsletter, and podcast. For more information on the ebook and where it can be purchased, please visit manicmetallic.com forward slash products. We look forward to hearing from you. Now back to the podcast. Well, the last thing that I'm going to put on a list of three things that I'm excited about currently in fashion is a company called Dirt. And it was launched in June of last year by Model Arizona Muse. It's a charity that aims to regenerate soil through the holistic act of biodynamic farming. The charity's premise is that Everything around us is grown from soil. And by creating biodegradable goods and engaging in biodynamic farming practices, we can solve the problem of climate change. This is a heavy oversimplification of DIRT's aims, but it is a worthy start. Watching the introductory videos on DIRT's website made a believer out of me. It had me thinking that we can all save the earth if we engage in biodynamic farming practices. I've included links below to give you guys so that you can learn a bit more about DIRT and its efforts to combat climate change and what biodynamic farming is. It sounds really promising in a time where those of us that care about sustainability are looking for lasting solutions and just something that we can do to help save the earth and its inhabitants. And... That's going to be it for me from this episode. Again, I was very, very excited to get back into things and start up season two of the Mad Metallic podcast. So thanks for tuning in and tune in for the next one as I get into a debrief of my fashion experiences in Europe. See you then. Thanks for listening. If you got value out of today's episode, 
It'd mean a lot to me if you'd rate, review, and subscribe to the Manic Metallic Podcast. Be sure to tell all of your fashion and climb friends and co-workers about the podcast as well. This would really help us to spread our message about fashion being an art, discipline, and force for societal change. And don't forget to stay in touch with us by subscribing to the Manic Metallic newsletter and following us on Instagram. Feel free to reach out to us through either of those means. I'd love to hear from you. I'll link these all in the show notes. You're the best. See you next episode.